Hello and welcome everybody to our webinar, Going Paperless in HR, Myth or Reality. My name is Melissa Sider. I'm the VP of Marketing and Communications here at AST Corporation, and I'll be acting as your hostess for today's session. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a couple of housekeeping items. You will be on mute throughout the presentation. If you would like to ask a question at any time, go ahead and type that into the question box in your control panel. Once the presentation has concluded, we'll go ahead and read those questions back so that our presenter, Tim Bracker, today can respond. We are recording this session. It will be available on the AST website in about a week. I'd like to go ahead and um, introduce um, AST Corporation to you um, if you're not familiar with our organization. Uh, AST is an Oracle Platinum partner. Uh, we are a systems integrator and we have several lines of business, uh, including enterprise resource planning and those listed along the left-hand column there today. We're here with our middleware practice um, talking about digital experience. Uh, we, um, as you can see, enjoy a very good relationship with Oracle and have over 25 specializations uh, for our organization. Uh, and then along the bottom, you'll see that we've won a number of um, industry and workplace awards, which make AST a pretty great place to work and allows us to attract top talent like uh, our presenter today. I would like to then go ahead and introduce you to our presenter today. Uh, Tim Brocker is joining us from our digital experience practice. He's a practice director with that organization. So welcome, Tim. Welcome back. Hi. Thanks, Melissa. And as Melissa mentioned, my name is Tim Brocker. I'm the practice director for the digital experience practice here at ASD. Uh, I've been in the industry for about 25 years now, and I've been working with the, the Oracle Digital Experience Solutions for about 15 years. So what we'll be going through this afternoon is um, what kind of challenges uh, folks experience in the HRMS uh, area. What are the challenges and what are the savings that can be can be got? Uh, then we'll go into simple ways, you know, trying to stay um, paperless, ways to capture HR, HMRS records without having to print them off and, uh, and scan them in, minimize that. And if you do need to scan them in, uh, scan them in at the front of the process rather than after you move paper around the building. And then we'll look at securing HRMS records. What are the requirements around there? And then we'll take a look at two uh, case studies. One, uh, what kind of documents and what kind of security is needed uh, surrounding the employee on board case study. And then we'll move into policies and procedures and see how that, uh, that rolls out when you want to uh, go paperless. And then we'll do a recap and conclusion and, and then open it up for questions. So the first we'll go through is the, the content challenges and the potential savings. So in HR, uh, folks may spend more time managing paperwork than they do managing their employees or people. Uh, typical pains, I mean, you have piles and piles and rows and rows of file cabinets, uh, always pulling documents out of the file cabinets, making copies, uh, refiling documents. Uh, sending copies around the building, getting physical signatures, and you know throughout the the, um, the entire process, it, it is very manual and time consuming. Uh, and when content is stored in those uh, unmanaged, disconnected, multiple silos, it is extremely um, difficult to manage those properly and, and to organize that and put it into a central repository can help reduce costs, allow you to gain efficiencies, um, reduce risk, create value. And people can do self-service accessing documents from one central file store very quickly and easily, multiple people at the same time, eliminating the paper chase. So industry analysts and industry associations say it costs up to $20 in labor to touch and process a, a hard copy piece of paper. So that's each time somebody touches it, it adds another $20 onto the process. And it costs $120 in labor to look for and find a misfiled document. On average also, 15 or more percent of our office space 
is taken up by file cabinets. And that's probably even more true in HR. So what's that cost of inefficiency? A typical manual process looks this way. You either get an email or you get snail mail, open the mail. Uh, you make a copy of that document, file the original so it doesn't get lost, route that document for approval. Then the approver receives and signs, and many times there's multiple approvers. And then they make a copy for their records. They file their copy. And then they route the signed copy back to HR. HR receives that signed copy. And then typically at the end of the process, they scan it in to a file folder. And then they create an attachment in their ERP system, whether it's eBusiness Suite, JD Edwards, or PeopleSoft. Now, a, an automated process or a paperless process, you still would receive mail. Hopefully, that would be electronically, but sometimes it's, it's physical. Then you would capture or scan that, that document at the front of the process to the um, repository and create the workflow automatically. Then some, some uh, organizations file that original and keep it for a certain period of time and then dispose of it. Then, through the electronic workflow, an approver uh, receives a, a, a workflow tasks, and they do an electronic signature on the document. Then it's automatically forwarded back to HR, <clears throat> where they receive the signed copy electronically. If you compare those two processes, you save uh, in the neighborhood of six steps for each document that you send through a process. Six documents times the $20 should, means that it's $120 minimum per process when you receive a paper document and process it. So even if I do a calculation and I cut that um, cost of touching a document from the analyst uh, estimate of $20 down to a $10 price tag for each time I touch a document, when you have six steps in a process and you save time in each process, uh, that adds up to $60 per document that you put through the building. So as you can see, I've got a documents per week calculated out to documents annually and then annual savings. If you have 50 documents that are going through processes, that actually adds up to 2,600 documents annually and the savings is $156,000. If, you, if you're a larger organization and have 200 or more documents every week, that can add up to $624,000 per year in efficiency savings. Some other costs that, weren't, that really wasn't in that calculation are duplicate data entry, uh, documents being pulled and mailed out, uh, putting box, uh, putting documents in boxes for storage, paying off-site storage such as Iron Mountain, buying copy paper, um, and your file cabinet floor space. So without even considering those, you're looking at a savings of one to three million dollars over a five-year period. And that's, I think, conservative. So now we've established some, some return on investment and, um, and justification for looking at, at trying to go paperless. Um, one of the problems is, you know, how do I get this into a system and how do I uh, not have as much paper to begin with? So ingesting content into a content system can be very quick and very easy. If you're bringing back file documents in to try to get rid of um, file cabinets, you can print off and use uh, barcode labels or barcode cover sheets so that you don't have to do any typing as you're bringing them in. You simply select and print off the label, slap it on, and then do scanning. Otherwise, if you want to not have any paper at all, many times you receive um, emails that have attachments, a lot of communications go that way. You, on an individual basis, you could drag and drop from email into the system. 
uh, or you can drag and drop. If you filled out a document, a PDF or a Word document from your desktop, drag and drop and put that right into the system. Another way is to leverage uh, optical character recognition, which is OCR or intelligent characteristics or character recognition in uh, ICR. That can automatically uh, extract data from your documents, populate the index values so that you can properly categorize and search for documents later. And that's really the key. In order to access and secure the, the documents, the records, we need to properly index them and categorize them. Here's an example of um, Oracle Web Center Capture, Enterprise Capture. Uh, the idea here is that it can work with email, automatically monitoring email inboxes, bringing content in, separating documents out, and making it easy to uh, index those documents and do a quality check. So it eliminates duplicate data entry when we can do the, the indexing up front. It eliminates, uh, you can leverage database lookups to make it happen quicker and or you know, through a drop down select list to validate and be, have standard input into things like document type and or with these, I've actually created the title automatically um, by the index values that are being put in here as well. Same with uh, the intelligent capture ICR. You eliminate all du duplicate data entry Minimize any keystrokes that you're going to be doing. Minimize all the typing. Leverage database lookups. Leverage drop-down select list. And validate that information against your existing systems, such as you know employee name, employee number, policy ID, and things like that. So next, we'll take a look at uh, ways to secure or what the securing requirements are in your HRMS record, because some of uh, the documents that are coming in shouldn't be seen by everybody. And that's a critical um, item is making sure that the right documents are presented only to the right people at the right time. So um, in HRMS, you restrict access to the documents until they're approved, and then they could be released to the public that could be policies, generic policies that go organization wide. Uh, when it's approved, you could release um, confidential documents to HR only or HR management only. Next, once a document's approved, like procedures, they may uh, go to HR and to a department or a role based um, access so that the procedures are only uh, available by certain groups of people, or you may want it to go out when a document's received to be viewable by HR manager and the employee only. So there are a number of different um, strategies that are employed for different document types and systems nowadays can handle and make sure that, that you know, those are securely stored and only act accessible by the correct people. So next we'll look at a case study for the types of documents uh, that we use in an employee onboarding process. Um, so here you would have an applicant. They may fill out an application on the portal, or you may have them fill out a more extended application that's paper-based or PDF-based. And then those documents, along with maybe a resume, is uploaded. Um, you have to create a list of required documents, W-4s, the I-9s, maybe um, certifications that are needed for each job uh, description. And then you may email out organizational policies and benefits or make them just available on a portal or on the cloud. Uh, and then the employee goes through interviews and then they fill out their, the rest of their profile information for IT, security access and things like that. So there are all types of documents that need to be managed and updated throughout this entire process. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'll do a demo next. And in that, I've got a number of different players. So I've got Sandy Duncan, who is a new applicant uh, to Tim's department. 
I've got an HR manager in Tim, along with another uh, department employee, Susan. So what we'll see is of receiving those documents in, putting them in one integrated content system. And for this uh, demo, I'll be doing both on-premise and cloud. So it'll be a hybrid solution, um, just showing how, how a hybrid solution may work. And we'll be showing desktop integration. So drag and drop from the desktop, browser access so that if you're working from your laptop or you're working from an iPad, you'll be able to access the systems, whether on-prem or cloud, and then access from your ERP system. In this case, I have uh, uh, eBusiness Suite as an ERP system, but I've done the same types of things with uh, JD Edwards and PeopleSoft, uh, integrating them with uh, an on-prem and cloud solutions. So in the end, what we'd like to see is the right documents, having the right proper security applied to them so that only the authorized users to see the documents have access. So here I'm starting with um, the Oracle Docs in the Cloud um, solution. And I'm using my desktop integration for the Docs in the Cloud solution. And I've created a folder out on Docs in the Cloud for Sandy Duncan. In that folder, I put out some, some other folders for other required documents that we're asking Sandy to provide uh, during the process. So an application, certifications, uh, driver's license, a W-4, and information such as that. So when Sandy receives her packet and starts filling it out, she does that at home, creates the PDFs, and then she can in, have access to the cloud solution and quite simply drag and drop these the, the documents into the folders. And with these folders then can go the associated uh, index values. So as she's doing it, we know it's Sandy, we know it's certifications, we know it's a driver's license, we know it's a W-4. So those things from a drag and drop can automatically be synchronized and indexed and properly stored in the solution. So here's Sandy's driver's license that she just dropped in and employee information or name, you know, contacts and things like that. So next, I'll close out of the desktop uh, integration to the cloud and I'll pull up the, um, the Oracle Docs in the cloud solution itself so that if Sandy was working on her iPad rather than uh, her desktop, she would have access to be able to uh, upload the documents from, from the, uh, the browser-based solution as well. So you see I have my AST demo folder here. And I'll drill down um, and take a look at drilling down to Sandy's information. So here I've got uh, HR, I've got expense reports and applications, and, or applicants, and then here's Sandy Duncan. And here are the, the same folders that you saw in the desktop integration are available with the uh, the browser integration to the cloud. So here's an example. You open up the file and you see thumbnails of each page on the left. And you see, you know, the, the zoomed in image of the, the employment application here on the, uh, on the right. So if Sandy wanted to upload a driver's license from, you know, somewhere else, she could. And the same solution, uh, it does have um, a mobile app so that you can have access to the content and update content right from your mobile device as well. So that's showing a couple of different user interfaces. One, just the desktop integration to cloud and the other, the cloud browser that you can use um, with your laptop, your desktop or, or iPad. Next, um, what I'd like to show is this is eBusiness Suite. I'll log in and go into um, 
that employee's uh, record or screen. She's employee 2109. So I pull up Sandy Duncan here that she's in eBusiness Suite. And I provided a cloud integration so that you can write from eBusiness Suite if that's where you live, if that's where you do your job. You can just click on the document and you can see cloud integration from eBusiness Suite uh, right to the cloud and have access to all the, the same documentation that you would from the browser solution. So here's a certification that uh, Sandra put in that she was uh, required to bring. So the, the ERP or the, the integration to, to uh, PeopleSoft or JD Edwards can be the cloud-based solution or the on-prem solution or a hybrid. So in this case, I started out with the cloud and, and later on when, when uh, we go in, we'll have changed that to being the on-prem search and we can see that. So here after um, Sandy has come into the building and she's starting on her first day or before she starts on her first day, um, they send her information off for um, a background check and they send you off for a drug test, right? And this is just an example of that security service that may be doing a background check or the, or the drug screening. How they would send the replies or the results of those checks back to HR uh, electronically rather than mailing them in snail mail. So with this, I've sent a, a the background check off to an inbox coming to our organization um, HR inbox, and you receive that electronically. Now, rather than printing these off and storing them in a file cabinet, I've got Enterprise Capture monitoring the HR inbox and automatically forwarding those documents to Capture so that you can index them without, without having to print them off, staying paperless. So in this case, it monitored that inbox. Every so many minutes, it'll bring them in and it brings it into a task list for me. And I see that it's created three documents. One is the um, email, you know, header itself or cover sheet. And the other two are each of the documents that were brought up as attachments. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so what I've done now is through the applicant ID, I provided a database lookup. <coughs> Excuse me. To go off and get Sandy's first name, last name, and all of her other contact information. And that's applied that to all three of the documents making you know, indexing quite easy. And then what I, I don't really want the cover sheet in there, so I'm gonna delete and remove that cover sheet from there and I'll only store the background check and the drug test. So now all I need to do is through a drop down, select what type of document it is. In this case, it's the, uh, the drug test. And then when I'm done doing that, I release it and it sends it off to either it can release directly to the cloud solution or in a hybrid, it sends it to um, the on-prem and then syncs it to the cloud. So next I'll go into the, into the on-prem solution, which is Web Center content. And I'll log in as, uh, as WebLogic here and take a look at the easy search Here's an HR search for documents HR, and here's the applicant ID. So here I see all of Sandy Duncan's documents that we put in. I've got applications, you know, her, her driver's license, her W-4, all the information, very easily captured and very easily stored in the system. So that's um, that. Next, I'll log out and um, let me go back um, to capture. And on Sandy's first day, she's going to need to bring in her I-9 uh, form. Somebody's going to have to witness her her documents, her passport, or whatever. 
uh, green cards of citizenship. And what I'm doing here is browsing out and, and doing a scan so that we can bring this into the system as well. So here's her, her I-9 form stored in the system. I'll use a database lookup here to um, populate her first name, last name, and other employee information automatically so I don't have to do typing. And then I'll just um, associate this as a document type I-9, and I can release that into the system. And now that physical document that she brought into the building is now digitized and you've got it there. Um, and now what, I, what we've got is, is a integration that can change uh, the attachments. So this attachment now has been changed to an on-prem attachment. And I can go into eBusiness Suite, search out and find in the content system, in the on-prem system, all of the documentation that's out there with a click of the mouse to it. So it can do either or, you know, either cloud or uh, on-prem and provide the same safe, easy access to uh, the content. So now, <clears throat> just to take a look at uh, secure access, let me get out of eBusiness Suite. And the security in the system should be such that the HR director would have access to all the uh, individual's uh, documents. So I'm going to log in as the HR manager and go to a quick, easy HR search, search them, and I see, you know, documents from Susan. I see documents from Kristen Baker. I see documents from Sandy Duncan. I can sort that and select them by document type or by an employee ID, whatever I need. Next, I'll go in and do the department manager, who's Tim. And as a department manager, my access is limited. So now I only see the documents from my two employees, Sandy Duncan and Susan. So then you, we want to make sure that it's restricted so that if Sandy goes in, she doesn't see Susan's records. So if Sandy logs in and does a search, all she sees is her documents. So Sandy's got access to only her information. She doesn't have access to Susan's or Kristen's. And next, if I go into Susan, the same thing applies to the other employee. Susan only sees her documents. So she sees her I-9 or drug, well, maybe you don't show her a drug test, maybe you do. We can limit uh, based on security which documents come up in the, in the employee searches as well. So that demonstrates that we can provide the right documentation to the right person at the right time with the right security. So next, we'll walk through uh, the policies and procedures case study. So in, in this uh, policies and procedures, um, there's either a new regulation, a new law, or an update to an existing law that you need to remain in compliance with. So normally legal collaborates on the policy. The policy is sent for review. Um, they get consultation and feedback, there's some final editing, <clears throat> and then there's a final review with the stakeholders, and then there's policy approval, and then they post it or publish it to, um, you know, they may print it off and put it on the wall, they may um, put it into, um, you know, on the portal, or they could put it out on the cloud and or the on-prem. So in this presentation, there's a number of different um, uh, characters. One is I'm doing policy modification as WebLogic. Uh, and then I've got Tim and Gilbert, who are policy approvers. And I have Kristen, who is a policy viewer only. So she's just a general employee that, that would need to, in this case, it's in the procurement area where she needs to see the procurement uh, policy. So what you're going to see, again, is creating or modifying a policy 
seeing multiple uh, policy versions and who has access to what versions, uh, an approval workflow. And then we'll see that Kristen, who's only a viewer, will only be able to see the, uh, the most recently approved policy, even though at a one is in flight in the process of being approved, she only sees the one that has actually been approved, edited, and released. And then easy access from all user interfaces from both systems, cloud and on-prem, and desktop, <clears throat> browser, mobile, and others, right? So here, similar to the to the earlier uh, presentation or demo, I'm going out to my Oracle Docs in the cloud instance under the AST demo, and there's a, my policies and procedures folder. So you can make that uh, you know a generic folder if you'd like for all uh, employees to see. I've got a holidays uh, schedule out there, so if anybody's interested in that, they can uh, click on that and view it. I've got um, Time and expense policies. Here's the expense appro um, approval and payment calendar. So everybody's interested in that when you incur expenses. What day do I need to get the get them in by and what day are they paid? Or if I'm on the road and I need to get somebody's phone number, if I need, I can pull up the phone book and uh, right from my right from my uh, mobile device, see Tim Brocker's phone number, get it, and give him a call. So all the normal, <clears throat> you know, documents that are that are needed. Here's the one that I'll do versioning with. This is a, a supply chain management and procurement policy for bids and RFPs and everything. So on the top, I've got my company there, if you saw, and um, that's what I'll be changing uh, moving forward. But here, if I'm on my iPad and I want to get it because I'm not. Uh, sitting in my in my office at, at my laptop, and I've got my iPad on, on the airplane, and I need to look something up, I can actually sign into the cloud here as well, right? So I can go um, down to the policies area and have access through the browser to all of the same documents. So here's the holiday schedule. I need to know what day I get off next. Looks like Independence Day. And then uh, if I have a phone book or need to look up somebody's phone number, there's all the pages of the phone book print out. All easily accessible. And then here's my procurement policy. And again, it says uh, my company at the top. And I'll change that to AST later and create another version. So that's access from uh, from the browser. Now I'll go into the uh, into the content server. And I'm in as web logic and I'll do a search for just the policies. There's the policies that I saw out on the cloud as well. And here's my procurement policy. <clears throat> so I'm gonna check that document out and save it down uh, and, and work on it. And I'll change my company. Instead of my company, let's just do AST Corporation. And let me save that. And then I'll just check it back in real quick. Browse out and select it, and check in. Now, if I go to the content information, you'll see that revision number six is in a status of review. That means I checked in a new policy and made a change to it, and now I need a couple of people to review it and approve it before it's automatically published for everybody else to see. So now I'll log in as Tim, uh, as Kristen. Kristen is an, uh, the average employee over in the procurement department, wants to check the policies. So she does a search, finds the policy document, 
opens it up and she still sees my company. Even though there's a new one being approved, it isn't officially approved. So we can't let her, you know, it be released to everybody at this time. So now I'll, I'll log out and log in as Tim. And then I'll go through the approval. So I can either get an email and or I can just pull this up in a work list. And I can, uh, let's see, open it up, open up the, uh, the workflow and with the, uh, with the document, take a look at the document. Note it's stored in its native format. So um, what that means is if I'm going through the approval process, I can actually do the track changes and monitor what was changed from version to version and edit that and look at that now. And I, I could check it back in if I needed to and make changes and then forward it on in the process. So now I'll, uh, well, before I leave, let me do this. This is just a, a, what is called subscription. So I went to my subscriptions. And if I, I go in here and see that if I do content actions, I can either subscribe or unsubscribe. This shows me that I've subscribed to the policy, the procurement policy document so that when it's finally approved, I'll get an email notification saying that there's a new a version of the, uh, of, the, of the policy out there and I'll have access to get to that really quickly. But now I'm in as Gilbert. So I'll go in and edit that document, take a look at it, see that AST Corporation was changed. And now I'll just go and approve that document. <coughs> so once it's approved, um, I log out, and I know I'm going back and forth a bit, but it's just to show the different roles and when people get access to what documents. So it can be important. So I'm going to log in as Kristen, who was not able to see that document earlier. And if she searches for it now, since there's a newly approved version, she sees the most recent version of the document when she does a search, and that's done instantaneously. And here you see the number of versions and you know whether they you know when they were released, how many there were as well. Now I'll go to this is my inbox, Tim at AST. And here I received my email because I was a subscriber to that document saying that a new procurement policy was just sent out, and I could click on view content. Uh, and pull that document up and review it and see what changed. But now everybody who subscribed would be uh, receiving that email. So everybody would be made aware that there is a new policy out there organization-wide. And from all the other user interfaces, that policy has been rolled out and synchronized. So you see the policy document there, version two is there. And I can edit and take a look. There's two versions. I started the cloud uh, just one version ago. So it synced uh, the two that I was working on. But you, the cloud version, the cloud uh, system does have versioning of documents now as well. And if I go to my, uh, my desktop integration to cloud and drill down on that, that policy has been updated and synced and, and is, is on my desktop integration as well. So next, there's a couple of uh, final things that I'd like to, to go into. And I'm going to log in as WebLogic now. Um, in here, there's very easy search capability. And if I go to search policies, um, you see that I've got expiration date right here as part of the metadata. So each of the documents in HR and in policies, I've added that, that expiration date to the metadata and have filled it out for some of the documents. 
So if I search for, or I can create, I can do a search saying, give me um, all the employees documents that have an expiration date on them coming up in, you know, in the next three months, six months, or however long I need. And I can fill, the, fill those dates out and send it. And I get uh, Sandy Duncan's driver's license is going to expire. Maybe she needs to have a, a validated driver's license because she drives trucks or cars as part of her employment. Also in the policies, you may have policies that expire on an annual basis. Well, you create that search and all you need to do is save it as, and you can create my saved query. And here you see 831.17 as uh, the expiration date. These can also be part of a process, and here's the driver's license again, part of a process that would go into a workflow that would give them an, a document expiring notification so that they can um, re-up their certifications and, re, and then you know drag and drop or put their new certifications in. And you can be assured that everybody that needs to be certified is certified in a timely manner. So that was just a, a kind of a summary or a brief view of how policies and procedures um, can, can be paperless in essence. Uh, next, we'll move to recap and conclusion. Uh, early in the presentation, we saw that <clears throat> analysts say that it can cost up to $20 each time someone touches a piece of paper and has to process it. And it's, a, it's possible to save as many as six, maybe more uh, steps or touches in a process, which can add up to one to three million dollars easily over a period of five years. And you can do that if you leverage efficient capture, smart indexing to, you know, to reduce as much as possible duplicate entry and or any keystrokes that are being done. If you automate approvals, and you put proper, secure, but easy access you know, to the system from the cloud, from your desktop, from a mobile device, or from eBusiness Suite, PeopleSoft, or JD Edwards. Very easy to use one content system as a service that can be accessed by really any uh, user device that, that's out there. Well, all the way from mobile over to your ERP. So going paperless actually can be a reality. Next, right. we'll move into questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Tim. Um, that was uh, very informative. Um, all right, at this time, we will go ahead and open things up for um, a Q&A session. If you have a question, please go ahead and type that into the um, question box um, in your um, control panel. Uh, we have had a few questions floating in, so we'll start with those. Um, first question, uh, what is the duration of a typical deployment? Um, the typical deployment, um, I don't know if there really is such thing as a typical deployment. Um, you can get, get a, a, a base system installed and up and going, I would say anywhere from six to eight weeks, depending on, um, on the complexity. But if, if it's a more detailed uh, deployment, they can run you know, six months or more. Okay, great. Um, can we deploy an on-premise solution, then deploy cloud later? Sure, you can start with an on-prem solution um, and get that footprint, get everybody used to um, working in a paperless manner in a, in a, in, and get comfortable with that, and then add the synchronization out to the cloud at a late, later stage and make it available to people from, uh, from both during the, with a hybrid solution. Okay, this question is related. Can we deploy a cloud-only solution? Yes. So you can, you can and I tried to, um, to demonstrate that a little bit by, by having the user access the cloud-only and access the cloud from, and, and what I used was an on-prem uh, e-business suite system, but whether it's an on-prem e-business suite system or, or a cloud uh, ERP system or another system, 
we can do the deployment and integrate with the cloud if you'd like to own it. Sure. Okay, thanks. Um, we don't currently have an employee onboarding workflow in our ERP system. Is there an onboarding workflow available with this solution? Sure, there, there's, um, with, um, with the solution, you can get the, um, the Oracle on-prem BPM suite that provides very, very great functionality for drag and drop creation of workflows. And there's the, the, the Oracle Process Cloud that is a, a cousin or the same thing as the BPM solution that you can actually do a cloud process in, and, um, and do employee onboarding through that. And that has uh, configurable forms and, and it has uh, integration with the cloud or on-prem and can be, can be deployed very, very easily for a, um, an employee onboarding process. Okay, uh, that looks like we're, uh, we're wrapped up with our questions. So I'd like to take a moment um, and thank everybody for joining us today. Um, if you are available to join us on June 16th, we will be talking about how to mobilize your time entry process with Oracle Mobile Time Cards. So please join us, um, same um, uh, location. You can um, access the registration page from our website in the next day or two. Um, and um, again, thank you, um, Tim, very much for joining us um, today and for sharing um, the information about um, going paperless in HR. I, it looks like it really is a reality and not a myth. So thanks so much. Have a great day.